uh, before anything else, come with me. I want to show you something. I want to show you something that's just here. You see this? You see this? That is every single Zelda game that has ever come and or gone with trinkets, collectibles, and fun things. And the reason for all of that is because Zelda is my favorite franchise of all time. So there can't be a bad Nintendo Direct if it has some Zelda in it. <laughs> what? Why is he in the sky? I want to start with Zelda, but let's, let's get there. I want to say I loved this Direct because of the end, because of everything Zelda that we got, even a Zelda Game & Watch, which I told you, I told you. Just remake the Zelda Game & Watch and start a little series of this, because people will drop 50 bucks each to have them all. You know they will. You can start re-releasing these. That's easy money. I thought it was going to be part of the 35th anniversary, but disappointingly, apparently, they have nothing planned for that they even said sorry we have nothing while we don't have any campaigns or other nintendo switch games planned we've been working on this game and watch system as a special item to help mark the occasion a little game and watch i'm happy with that was it the best nintendo direct no it was not the best that said nintendo's was good and it was definitely the second best event next to that well, and Devolver Digital because it was fun. Okay, but we're not here to talk about other crappy events. We're here to talk about Nintendo. I want to go through everything we saw, and there were a ton of really cool surprises and announcements. There just wasn't everything I was hoping for, and that's my bad. Also, a lot of the things revealed weren't things I'm super interested in, but I know that people watching were freaking out. We streamed to 30,000 people watching at home, and I can't say thank you enough. If you were one of those 30,000, and there's a good chance one of you were, thanks for spending the time with me. Okay, let's take a look at Nintendo's Direct. I want to break down everything we saw, and then at the end, I want to dive even more into Breath of the Wild, because I've poured through that gameplay trailer, and I've noticed things. So the Direct stuff- is your own pair of- that noise out there. Going to Ugh, let's take a quick break and talk about one of our favorite sponsors, Raycon. What's that? You mean you haven't purchased your own pair of Raycons yet by going to buyraycon.com forward slash beat-em-ups? What are you waiting for? I've already done it twice. Actually, the other pair was for Kim because she wanted her own pair. Yeah, even I got my own pair. Yeah, I mean, everyone wants Raycons. Well, yeah, everyone wants Raycon. I said that already. Raycons have great sound, more bass, a comfortable fit, they're noise isolating, they have six hours of playtime, which can be extended by charging them back up in the little carrying case they come with. Not to mention they come in a wide variety of fun colors and patterns. I use mine while I'm working out. I use mine while I'm cooking and while I'm pooping. You know what? Fine. You gotta laugh at my yeah. jokes. You gotta and say hi to me. I even used my Raycons while I was setting up to make this video so that I could move all the lights and cameras around. I've just been using my Raycons to listen to a podcast the entire time I've been setting up to film talking about the Raycons. So, one last time, click that link below and get yourself 15% off. I'm done. I'm done. Yeah, how about you lot keep it down? I'd appreciate it. I knew immediately that this event was going to end with Zelda because it started with Zelda or at least a Zelda fake out. And I don't think Nintendo would have the gusto to make it look like we're about to see something Zelda related and then flip it unless something was coming. I mean, that would just be too mean. We saw Ganondorf being carried by Tekken man. I have never played Tekken. And here's where we go wrong. <laughs> I've never played Tekken. I really have no input here. I I couldn't be more whelmed. Like if there's overwhelmed and there's underwhelmed. I'm not underwhelmed. I'm just I'm just whelmed. Like I like Smash reveals are the, one of the most exciting things about the event. So it always kind of stings when it's a reveal that you personally don't really care about. And that's fair. I mean, not everyone's going to care about every character. I loved Banjo and Kazooie. I was whelmed by Minecraft Steve. It happens, it's a crapshoot. But that's just me, and I'm thinking out loud, and I'm not gonna stand here and lie to you guys if I'm not excited about something. I'm gonna be honest. Life is strange, all of it, I think, and possibly a new cartoon colors titled Life is Strange game. 
are finding their way to Switch. I really loved the first Life is Strange. I adored it. And I've tried the others and for some reason they just haven't hit with me the same way. So for me, this announcement again wasn't like edge of my seat. I'm glad more people are gonna get to enjoy these games because of this. Super Monkey Ball is a game. I've never played one of these either, except for at the local arcade when we were allowed to go to arcades. There's an actual Monkey Ball arcade machine and Kim and I love that thing. It's got like a giant ball on it. You try and get top points. It's actually really hard and then you get tickets. That's the only Monkey Ball I've played. The next one honestly just flat out frustrated me. Like I'm gonna be honest, I am a little maybe too peeved about this next one. Mario Party, a superstar mix up mash or something. It's a new Mario Party. But like, it's a collection of favorites. So it's five maps from older games that people loved. But it just seems weird to me because the first Mario Party was lacking so much content. It only had five maps and they got repetitive really quickly because all of them, literally all of them were just around a roundabout. Like there was nothing really unique about those maps at all. And then recently that game got some cool DLC and I was hoping that when I saw this, oh, they're finally adding new maps to that game. But no, it's another game that only has five maps. It has been four years since Metroid Prime 4 was first announced. To be here on the fourth year of the fourth game, I really thought we would get, if anything, just a little bit of cinematic trailer, even like a 10 second splash screen, maybe a coming 2023 something, just something that tells me this game's moving along, that something is happening with it. But instead, we were just told, no, nothing. And Bayonetta was nowhere to be seen as well. Another game really announced around the same time. We got to be coming up on that four years too. Instead, there's a new, new Metroid game. It's one of those 2D traditional style games like we had fairly recently on the 3DS, which that game was amazing. So I'm actually not upset about this at all. Like I'm excited. It stings a bit watching it because it's kind of like, it's not the Metroid game I wanted but it's not Metroid Federation Force, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna like it. It's a new Metroid and it comes out in October, a couple of days before my birthday. Yeah, I'm excited for that. So, uh, goes a little rough here for a bit, but we get some Just Dance because you know, you gotta, Just Dance is literally in everything. Then a racing game where you, you're a unicorn or something, maybe. Dragon Ball Kakarot is coming to the Switch. Uh, you know me. I love seeing third party support. Another look at Mario Golf because it comes out pretty soon, so that makes sense. Oh, I did like this next one. We finally got some gameplay of Monster Hunter Stories 2. I am super excited for this game. It's more of, a, I don't want to say watered down, but it takes the Monster Hunter elements and makes it easier to consume, but at the same time, it's because it's a completely different game and there's more elements to it. The battles are RPG battles. You get eggs and you can hatch little monsties. You can't be mad at WarioWare. I really didn't think this was gonna happen today. New WarioWare comes September 10th. It's not a game I'd play on my own, but a game to play with Kim or a game to play online, that could be really fun. Shin Megami Tensei 5 is underrated, I feel like, as far as a Nintendo Switch release. I think it's be pop probably because everyone just wants Persona 5, but that's a game that's already been out. And I know I'm the same way. I just want Persona 5 too, but this is a brand new game for Switch, and it's it's very similar to Persona. The universe is crossover. I'm not really sure how. There'll be a super fan in the comment section that will tell me it happens every time. I, and I, you, my, my comment section can back me up here. I've been saying for years that Fatal Frame should come to Switch. At this point, and I've said this too, it's the last Wii U game they could bring over that anyone would care about. I've wanted this for a long time. It makes sense. Uh, it's a very creepy Wii U game. All right, then we got a couple things like DLC for Doom. Tony Hawk is still coming to Switch, which is great. But then Strange Brigade, I'm gonna weirdly focus on this one because I very recently got that on Game Pass and played it through with my friend and we had a ton of fun. It's a really great co-op multiplayer game and I highly recommend checking it out. It is on Game Pass for free. Mario and Rabbids got a quick mention, and then they moved on to Advance Wars 1 and 2 Remake. These were beloved Game Boy Advance games. I had no idea what I was watching while I was looking at it though. It's been a long time since I played one of those games or even seen or saw one of those games. And I was looking at this as one of the final announcements and I honestly was baffled. I was just 
how is this one of the last things we're seeing? I honestly thought, and this is going to sound really mean, but I thought it was just some budget shovelware looking game. I was like, what is happening? But then as soon as Advance Wars came up, I was like, oh, oh, oh. Camp. Oh, that was Advance Wars. I didn't even holiday. notice that was Advance Wars. Today okay, that's Nintendo cool. E -Shop. That's cute. That's cute. People like those. And I gotta be honest, re-watching this event, there are a lot of fun things smattered in around here or there. And again, comparing it to the other events we had during E3, this is leagues above and better than anything else we saw other than Xbox. But up till this point, I, I there was nothing really like super excited worthy. I mean, there were cool things and it's a good event. Here's an example. I'm not a Nintendo ambassador anymore, but the other ambassadors got sent presents from Nintendo. They were these like glass cases that you were supposed to break in case of extreme excitement. And it was for when they were reacting to the direct, if they got really excited, they were supposed to break the glass. Now, I didn't get sent one, obviously, but my point is up until now, I had no reason to break that glass. There were like, I might tippy tap on the glass and see if I can't loosen it up a little bit just in case something happens. There might have been a little bit of me getting really excited at the hype and then the glass was like shaking a little bit, but there was nothing to make me smash that glass. So when we got to this, Hyrule Warriors DLC, and they said it was the last thing today. I actually thought I was about to have another seizure. <laughs> this next segment will be our last announcement of the day. Please take a look. Like, really, if that had been it, I don't know. I don't even know if I would have made a video because I don't think I be, would have been able to say anything nice. <laughs> Thankfully, it wasn't. There was a few more Zelda things. Skyward Sword got another plug. Makes sense. Comes out in a month. Then we saw the Zelda Game & Watch, which I already talked about. But I didn't mention that unlike the Mario one, it actually comes jam-packed with games. They've crushed the first two original NES Zeldas and Link's Awakening onto this thing, as well as an actual Game & Watch game. And that's really neat. It's nice that I will actually might have a reason to open this one and play it. I won't, but I could. This is the sequel to The Legend of oh Zelda my God, Breath of the yes. Wild. Development has been steadily progressing. Yes. For today, we've prepared some new footage to show a bit yes. more of the game. Please take a look. Okay, 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 baby! Let's go! Let's go! What? Why is he in the sky? Is this like Skyward Sword? What is happening? Why is that eggs? Why is his hair so long? And fully! I'm still so hyped. So the trailer starts with Link's arm getting like, like sucked into like goo. I don't know. I don't know. The calamity. The calamity took his arm. I don't know. But judging by the rest of the trailer, it looks like his arm has become the Sheikah Slate essentially for this game. Then it hard cuts to a Skyward Sword-esque vision of him falling from the sky. I love this. It's kind of weird because I thought maybe they would take a more Majora's Mask root and maybe they still will where it goes a lot darker and we're in like this twisted version of the realm but it actually looks like ironically or coincidentally with skyward sword coming out in about a month they've taken it to the skies and instead it's very light airy breezy and it has that similar breath of the wild fun feeling but yeah link plummets from the sky we see chunks of hyrule floating above a beautiful shot of him running through the field, his hair flowing in the wind. It does look like it's had some visual improvements, but a very similar looking game to the last one. I like this little tease towards some new enemy types. We've got one of the rock mons. God, why don't I know my Zelda names? But he has one of the goblin camps like perched on top of him. So it's like merged the two threats. I like that. Oh, and I'm now getting this, but we see another shot 
of Link's arm glowing, and then it immediately cuts to his new abilities. So I guess, unlike the first game where you had to go around and unlock the Sheikah Slate abilities, now they're tied into his arm and he has new abilities. So rather than just a stasis, just freezing something in place, it looks like he has a reverse time thing where he sends this spiky ball back up the path that it came down. Next, it looks like he has this weird dragon arm thing that's breathing fire. There's a puddle on the ground that kind of gets like sucked up and then Link shoots into one of the sky buildings and that's where he is now. I don't know if that'll be ability you can just pull the trigger on or maybe you have to find a certain spot, but that's your way of teleporting up to the platforms above. It would be great if you could do it anywhere at any time, but it might just be a teleportation thing. I don't know. Then we get a beautiful shot of the whole of Hyrule and then it cuts to the castle getting like up into the sky. Oh, and a release date, 2022, which is next year. Probably gonna be late next year and knowing Nintendo probably gonna be 2023, but hey, 2022. Okay, all of that is hype. I love the new abilities. I can't wait to mess around with them. I have so many questions. Like, do we have the old abilities or is it just the new ones this time around? My biggest thing, my biggest, oh, I wish we could have seen this or had this explored more, is one of my and a lot of people's biggest complaint from the first game, if there was a complaint to be had, was just kind of like emptiness. There wasn't much around as far as other NPCs, civilizations, villages, things to do, places to go, that kind of stuff. I mean, there was a massive map, but it was a lot of open fields and mountains and terrain and... The fun you had was sort of interacting with all of that rather than the people that actually lived there. And for all the expansive field we saw in the trailer for going up in the sky and looking around, there was still kind of nothing. Like even in this last shot, you see these platforms, there was nothing on the platforms. It's cool that they're there. I mean, it's cool that we're in the sky now, but why? What, what are we gonna do up there? That's my biggest question right now. Like, the abilities explain themselves. I love getting to see those, and that'll be fun to mess around with. But the whole other element to this is you're in the sky now. But why now? Like, why? Why? That really, like, I don't, I hope this is coming across the way I want it to. Why? I guess what I'm saying is civilizations in the sky would be really cool. Things to do in the sky. People up there. I mean, games to play. I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm really excited and next year can't come soon enough. So the Direct as a whole was good. It was a good Direct condensed into itself. It was good and I had a good time watching it. What? Why is he in the sky? Is this like Skyward Sword? What is happening? Why is that eggs? Why is his hair so long? And fully. There's gameplay. Oh my God, baby, there's gameplay. What the heck? What is happening? You can suck through things. I want more. I want more. Yeah, I'll give you double, 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 double. <laughs> Next year. No freaking. When though? When? So, if you like this video and you had a good time watching it, or you just like the Nintendo Direct, hit the like button, subscribe, follow me on my social medias everywhere. There'll be links down below. Check out the sponsor while you're down there. I love you all. I'm exhausted. Bye. <laughs>